Welcome to Electro Online, and now let's talk about something called the histogram. Sometimes you'll see like graphs and they're called histograms, and you wonder, well, what are they? What are they talking about? And really, a histogram is no different than the distribution graph that we've seen before. So here we're going to do a different example. Let's say we toss two dice, and the outcome can either be, well, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 12. I put down zero and one just to kind of see where that falls in our understanding of what we mean by the what we call the random variable. So the random variable in this case is going to be x, and x is going to take on the value of the two dies that you've just tossed. So we sum the two values up together, and that will be the variable x, the random variable. So x can be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It cannot be 0 or 1, so we just exclude those as possibilities, even though you may include that in your, in your distribution x cannot take on those two values, so definitely the probability of those two values is zero because there's no way you can get zero and or one with two dies. This column also shows you the probability of getting that as a result. And so when you go from two all the way to 12 when you toss two dies, notice that the probability increases until you reach seven and then decreases again back down to 12. Also notice that the probability of getting a two, two aces, Two ones is the same as getting 12, which is two sixes. When we add up all the probabilities, they should add up to one, of course. And so here we have what we call a probability distribution that's normalized in such a way that if you add up all the sums, all the totals of every one of those probabilities, they should add up to one. So if you add up one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus five plus four plus three plus two plus one, that should add all up to 36. And let's check it. That's three, that's six, that's 10, 15, 21, 26, 30, 33, 35, 36. They do indeed add up to 36, which is the probability of all of them occurring. Total would be equal to 1. Notice that I drew a small second graph. Now, what is the difference between the two? Except that here you have little blocks and there are single lines. Just don't notice that that is a difference. But here, notice the vertical axis. Here you have probabilities. There you have number of occurrences. Let's say we do 36 experiments. We toss the die 36 times. Notice that the probability of getting a 7 would be 6 out of those 36. The probability of getting a 2 is a 1 out of 36. So we can use this as a distribution of expected number of times that you'll get these particular outcomes when you do the experiment 36 times. And notice that the shape of those two are identical and the relative height of those are identical as well. So the difference between having what we call a histogram where you show the number of occurrences and maybe I should put an S behind that, versus the probability on the vertical axis. The shape is exactly the same, the relative size are the same. The only thing is that this is normalized in such a way that when you add up all the totals, you get one. And here, when you add up all the totals, you get the total number of experiments. They're both histograms. This is what we call a probability density distribution. This is simply a histogram showing the number of occurrences as a function of the total number of experiments that you've, that you've uh, uh, practiced or that you've done. All right, so therefore, I just want to show you another example with dies instead of tossing coins and also give you the feel of what a histogram is, what the name for that is. It's just another name for a probability distribution or a graph that shows the number of occurrences versus the possibilities here, the possible values for x. And I guess I should put x as a variable here on the horizontal axis as well. And that's how we do that.